Alatra TV channel together with the Embassy of the Republic of Cuba in Ukraine presents the creative essence of the Cuban soul. Within the framework of the international project, Creative Society. Havana, one of the most beautiful cities in the Western Hemisphere, is full of life. The living beauty of the city is in its inhabitants. Beautiful people who not only preserve the unique, interesting aspect of the city's architectural assemblies, but also share cordiality light and joy. From a bird's eye view, Havana is a colorful city surrounded by a blue arch of the Gulf of Mexico. And from its interior, it is a city that reflects a joyful and vigorous character of its people. This story is about humanity, unity, and Havana, told by people who did a lot for the city and its inhabitants. Havana and its people. Mrs. Diaz, we're very happy to make the second film with you. We're very grateful for this opportunity to make this film about Havana and its people. What is Havana and its people to you? Havana is the city where I was born. And you can imagine that, for me, it is my hometown. That means a lot to a person because I was born, grew up, fell in love, started a great part of my life in Havana. So for me, the development of my personality is closely related to Havana. Havana is a meeting place. It is a place of creativity. As Havana hosts a lot of international events biannually and annually, where creativity is a fundamental point. Havana does have a unique charm that varies in its impressive architectural values, because it is a city where one can contemplate the architectural evolution of this part of the world. Magda Rezik Aguedre is a famous Cuban journalist. With her documentaries, Magda reveals the history of the inhabitants of Havana to the entire world. Havana has this charm. It possesses this magic in human terms. And when, for example, you walk along the beautiful shore of the Malacan of Havana, which is a kind of balcony to the sea that the city has all over its northern area, if you have seen it, you know how beautiful it is. When you walk along that riverbank and start your journey through the historic center of Havana and into the interior of Havana in the Miramar neighborhood, when you go through this area, you take a sort of journey through time in the architectural evolution of Havana and Cuba. Although what I like most about Havana, I can tell you, is a Caribbean sunset. When you sit on the Malacom promenade and watch the sunset in Havana, you find the most unsurpassed beauty and the most beautiful colors that you could ever imagine when the sun bids us farewell. And this also appeals to everyone who visits us. A dialogue with the sea. We talk about the treasure of Cuba, the treasure of people living in Cuba. 
the treasure we are able to cultivate, which is the talent of people. This song characterizes Havana. In Havana, we really tend to hang the sheets in the sun, and that makes them stay white. Interestingly, this has been very well noticed and reflected in the song that has become a symbol of Havana. Gerardo Alfonso is a famous Cuban singer and composer whose art is loved by all the people of Cuba. People call him an ambassador of the Cuban culture. First of all, I would like to thank you for being so kind to care about the culture of our country and for spreading it on the Alatra channel. We are proud of that. The people of my country have chosen me for my songs, for my attitude to life, to be a kind of ambassador of the Cuban culture. From my perspective, from the perspective of my way of life, this is a responsibility that I bear to my people. Havana is the city where I was born and where I live, where I have lived for 72 years, 73 years, but I am a fourth generation Havana native. Ciro Bianchi Ross, his journalistic activity has been a national heritage of Cuba throughout 40 years of his activity and serves as an example of insightful and responsible journalism. I would like to say that my whole family has lived in Havana for four generations, in a city that has been recognized as the City of Wonders. And a resident of Havana is just the way he is. He is open, he is generous, he is sociable, he is talkative. In short, he is fun-loving. If you analyze Cuban society, Havana society, you will realize that there is a sense of solidarity and humanity that governs Cuban life. Havana life. We said that a resident of Havana is a very distinctive character. I would say that he is very special. The native of Havana does not imitate anyone. He is a personality, a very happy character who likes to spend time in nature, to exist in an open space. The people of Cuba can go anywhere in the world and risk their lives for the sake of health, for the sake of happiness of others, to help those affected by the earthquake. We Cubans are good neighbors. And when a neighbor lacks something in his house, we can give him what he needs. And the neighbor, in turn, can give something to us. So, 
I think what identifies and distinguishes us in today's world is the ability to show solidarity. Havana today is a monument to humanity. And who knows better than the Cubans what? Solidarity, friendship, and creation are. Our national characteristic is mutual assistance, spiritual and moral values, unity, preservation of culture, heritage. And this is a perfect example of those human qualities that are so necessary for the implementation of the creative society. The society of happy people, which everyone aspires to, and which people all over the world are currently building. This documentary that we are making together is also a contribution to raising awareness of how it is possible to achieve this creative society. We can show how we, a small country with few resources, are also inspired by the creative society and try to apply all our resources, all our efforts all our wisdom, all our history towards ensuring that this creative society continues to develop. For me, Havana is really the city where I was born. For me, Havana is basically its people. Tatiana Fernandez de Los Santos, director at Restora, one of those people whose tireless and sincere work was devoted to preserving the historic shape of Havana, which the world has the opportunity to admire today. People in Havana are a bit noisy. People in Havana, this is laughter. Havana is the city of colors. It has many colors. Havana is at sea. I mean, I cannot imagine Havana without the sea so close to us. Havana is the colors of the woodwork, the colors of the roofs, people walking in the streets, in the squares, people shouting when they greet you, gesturing when they talk to you. Havana's architecture evolved with buildings of artistic Baroque, Mudejar, and Arab type. Rita Yebra, she is an architect and was awarded the academic degree of Doctor of Engineering at the University of Havana. The person who, in her works, expresses her devoted love for Havana. Havana is called the City of Columns, and there are plenty of them. The eminent Cuban writer Alejo Carpentier wrote a book about the City of Columns, in which he noted that Havana can be traversed from the port to its western center through portals with columns. Havana is not only a city to be contemplated in the beauty of its architecture, which is very beautiful, but also the city that enchants not only foreigners, but also people who live there. Preserving city, culture for the new generations and new smiles is a serious work of many people. And such enthusiasm and inspiration was given by the historian of Havana, Eusebio Lille, who is not only loved by the people of Havana, but is an example to be followed by the entire society. When Havana's largest old buildings collapsed and residents 
were left homeless. Eusebio Lille helped to turn the city into one of the most colorful places in the world. Thanks to him, a unique restoration project of the old Havana was developed. The priority in the development was to improve the quality of the life of the citizens and the inhabitants themselves actively participated in the restoration of the city. For all our generations, and I think for the generations to come, Yosebe Leal has been a person who has preserved the history that once existed, but which at one time seemed to languish, to fall into ruins. Yet he managed to restore it from those ruins and save all the history of the city, although it was not it was not only to save a building or architectural works, but all the history that combines that heritage that we have today. I believe that he is one of the greatest examples of that ability to act, because what we have to do is to act, to create. I believe that one of such people with the greatest ability to create that I have known was Eusebio Leal. He was capable of working for the public good and to encourage people to discuss what kind of society of the future they want to live in, how they want it to be, how it would be better to coexist in harmony with nature and with other people. We do not restore the city to contemplate the hedonistic mind, we restore the city to live in it. The historian of the city of Havana, who recently passed away, but who was the leader of this project for more than 50 years, insisted that a human should always be a fundamental object of the restoration. That is why it was necessary to restore souls more than buildings. I have no doubt that in all the work I've been able to do or inspire, there is a deep need for achieving justice, for making beauty possible for everyone. When you give something to someone with love, with affection, people, no matter how insensitive they may seem, in the depths of their soul, perceive it, and in many cases, they are grateful for it. The film is precisely called Restoring Souls because it brings us closer to the history of the relationships that existed during the restoration of the historic center of Havana, a center that was declared a World Heritage Site in 1993. Eusebio Lille, as an authentic Havana citizen, loved his city and its inhabitants worked for the salvation and dissemination of spiritual, moral, and intellectual values. I would like to say I met Eusebio many years ago. He always respected people living in Havana. I mean, he made Havana not just a museum, but a museum where people live. And this reflected in his concern for the social buildings he created. For example, the houses for the elderly, the houses for children with psychomotor problems and others. When you build a hotel, you also prioritize the social environment and it becomes a source of income, a source of work for people, a working environment. Thus, he thought about old Havana in all its details. During his work, above all, he earned respect, the admiration and affection of all the people and formed many people, because Amon has multiple works in restoration that have been carried out under his leadership. There is a wonderful institution, 
called Gaspar Melchol de Jovellanos Workshop School, where he preserved to save crafts that had already been lost. And the fact is that this school didn't just benefit the historic center, but also benefited other people who worked there. Working with such a person as Leo was really a privilege for me and for all of us who are here. The fact that I started here and keep working here has been like a gift that life gives you. To have had such an important boss with so much wisdom, with so many skills to convince and charm people, and I really believe that he was a godfather of Havana, as everyone calls him, because no one else loved Havana and its heritage as much as he did. Tatiana has been a tireless worker, a tireless follower of all the ideas of Eusebio Leal. This is the team that I mentioned earlier, that Eusebio managed to unite around him who were his accomplices, in a good sense of the word. It was really the work of many experts, archaeologists, historians, sociologists, architects and designers. It was the work of many people, those who worked outside during those who work inside, as well as those who live in the historical center with a desire to create. And I think it was so beautiful and it was what Lille really left in all of us. I think the work of the historian's office has a unique model of governance in the world, and it was really something that brought people together. I believe that human beings have a tendency to get together. That is, animals also get together. But human beings are distinguished precisely because they are social beings. They need to have society. But in order for that society to be preserved and for that society to function, the following is needed. Firstly, it must be creative, because otherwise it would be very boring. Secondly, it must be creative in order to develop. And thirdly, it must be creative because a human himself has to develop in order to become a social being, and that development should have an inner creativity. There is a duty to your people, which is an extension of what has formed you, what enriched you as an artist, as a human being, as a social and kind being, and you just give that back. So it's even not a duty, it's a pleasure. I think it's more than a duty for me. I mean, at a personal level, as an artist. This is very important, because countries, peoples, have a lot of wealth, which subsequently serves as their cultural heritage. Because art is conveyed from heart to heart and gives the opportunity to get to know people. Art is different from any other form of social expression. True friendship and love are two very great powers that a human has. They are inherent in your children, art and creativity. This is true. Art is impossible if it is not supported by love. Almost all the actions a person does, or all the actions he does with love, are valuable and transcendent. I feel like I'm part of humanity. I'm 86 years old. I don't know how much longer I will live. The most important thing is that I had and still have inner peace. It is essential that everyone can treat everyone with love. Love is what unites us. 
what gives us inner and spiritual power. When we interview and talk to Cubans, we notice that they talk a lot about spiritual values as well as about love. Could you please share with us your vision of what love is in its highest and purest essence? Love for me is fundamentally fidelity. It is dedication. It is sacrifice. It is tenderness. It is courage, because in order to love and to do the things you want and love to do, you often have to be very brave. Silvia Rodriguez has a song called Solo el amor, only love. And I'd like to quote a few verses from that song that really defines what I feel and understand about the word love. He says, Only love illuminates what lasts. Only love makes a miracle of mud. Solo el amor alumbra lo que perdura. Solo el amor convierte en milagro el barro. Because everything about love makes us feel and awakens in us all the best that a human has. It is the most wonderful feeling that exists. Love awakens all that is pure and high in us when we really love. I am a person who cannot do anything without love. For me, love is the driving force behind everything. If I don't feel love for what I am about to do, I really can't. I can't do it. Love for me is the driving force that inspires me to be able to do whatever I am going to do. So love is very important to me. Solo el amor engendra la maravilla solo el amor consigue encender lo muerto In every country, in every city in the world, there are many honest people who want to change the world for the better and to create the conditions for a decent life, not only for themselves, but also for others. And these people join together to build a creative society worldwide. We live in the times when people, no matter how unrealistic it may sound because it was repeated so many times, should unite as nations, unite as humanity, to be able to withstand great problems that can threaten human life and prevent it from continuing on this planet. After all, the conflicts that we face are so serious. For example, such problems as war and disunity. This is why I think the Creative Society project is very important, because it is about defending kindness in a human being, solidarity with others, living in harmony with others. We're making this documentary film Havana and its people within the framework of the International Creative Society project. Creative Society is an international trend, 
and a need of people that is gaining popularity every day, in every corner of the world. Creative Society Foundations are based on human life, world peace, spiritual and moral values, as well as personality development. Could you tell us what is Creative Society for you? The Creative Society for me, after I have read the foundations of the Creative Society several times, here we have them listed. Human life is the most important thing, because we say that it is a human right to live, to be healthy, to be educated, to live with dignity, to live with comfort. It is really a great pleasure and a great joy for us to know that these ideas are spreading all over the world, because it is something that we all need. We all need this world to move towards improvement, towards empowerment, towards a positive development and not self-destruction. Because otherwise, if we don't manage to involve the whole world in this creative society, then we will obviously come to involution and self-destruction of humanity. We face so many problems, wars, the pollution of the planet, extreme poverty and death from diseases, that in other times people could not even have imagined. And selfishness that causes all this is one of the greatest evils. And the most terrible situations that we encounter today in our extremely complex world, which faces great dangers. In order to resist them, we should really ponder about changing the nature of a human being, how a person thinks, what he thinks, and what he should do for others. And then to put oneself in the position of another person, rather than thinking only of oneself. Selfishness should be banished if we, people, want to achieve a good coexistence on the planet where we live, and manage to build a better society by applying our creative abilities. I think we should be creative, but creativity should be used in a constructive way. Therefore, we must think how to ensure that intelligence and creativity are directed towards the true benefit of the millions of inhabitants of the planet. I believe that the eight foundations of the Creative Society are the most important, and they are perfect. Every one of us must find potential in ourselves to contribute to the common cause in order to achieve the goals that we have set for ourselves. Creative society is not just for you or me. We can implement it only at the global level. After talking with people all over the world for more than nine years, we now have these eight foundations. This is what every person tells us, how they answer the question of what kind of world they want to live in, and what values should be in it. What we are doing now is discussing these topics with everyone. Our goal now is to inform people and to talk to them about it. Most probably, we need to stimulate. Stimulate the positive things. Stimulate well-being of people stimulate positive actions and well-being in the spiritual sense. These are very powerful tools for further development. By suffering and complaining, there is no moving forward. We should look for solutions based on optimism. I am also concerned about the issue of wealth and poverty on the planet. And I believe that all those imbalances that man has created must be eliminated. As it is said in the foundations of the creative society, a human must remain a human in all circumstances.
As for me, I believe that the creative society is the most just society, where each person contributes according to his talent, according to his conditions and characteristics. I believe that among these eight values of the creative society, the most fundamental ones are life as the supreme value, the freedom of choice, safety, the freedom to receive information, ideology that exalts humaneness and humans, the integral development, the equal distribution of resources and the active participation in society's life. These are the eight points of the creative society. Actually, they are universal values that everybody agrees with. They are so obvious and so powerful that if they hadn't been already expressed, they should have been invented. Because everyone would like to live in such a society, wouldn't they? You as a journalist see the essence of how information is created, how these ideas are spread, as well as how information impacts people's opinions. Could you tell us what you think about news nowadays and the subjects it covers? How important is it to spread positive information? Positive information is, of course, fundamental, but informing people is only a part of the problem, because we should inform people, but in a way that people can assimilate and understand. But I think that the postulates of the creative society are so strong and persuasive that there is hardly a single intelligent person who denies that and doesn't want to live in the creative society. I believe that happiness comes from understanding that all of us should be happy and have equal rights. A human being is of the greatest importance. What unites us is that we are all human beings. And I believe that life is the most important thing that we, human beings, possess. What inspires me the most in the creative society is that people can have all the opportunities. We are creative beings and we can be fully developed, which is very important because achieving full development in each person requires many aspects. I believe that to be creative means to bring out the best in all of us. We have a saying in Cuba, do good and don't look for whom. And it is very important that people assimilate these ideas. I think that this is what is in the creative society, where personality itself develops and people know that there is always someone who needs us. We should start supporting campaigns like the one you're running. Because for me, it is very important that people join in. That is, not to exclude, but include people. And I think that we have to spread it. And the more we do it, the better. And the more of us, the better. I think we have already taken a step. We have the foundations of the creative society. And we have to continue developing them in order to achieve a better world, to achieve a better development of a human being, and to achieve that the society itself acquires a positive character, both for the sake of society itself and for the planet. All this will contribute to our taking care of our planet, because as long as the creative society establishes its principles, it will benefit our planet as well as every human being living on it. We thank everyone who participated and contributed to the creation of this film.